Today's video is on the compound light microscope. Hopefully in 7th grade you had the opportunity to use the compound light microscope to view different specimens. In case you didn't, today's video would be on what is the compound light microscope, how to use it, and the different parts of the compound light microscope. First, what is a compound light microscope? A compound light microscope is a microscope that contains two lenses in order to increase magnification and also a light source to better view the specimen. The first lens is in the eyepiece, also called the ocular. You will notice that on the eyepiece, there is this white section right here. That is the magnification of the eyepiece. Typically, the magnification of the eyepiece is 10x, and it will be stamped on that location to tell you the magnification. It can range anywhere from 5x up to 20x. The second lens is in the objective. The objective contains a lens that ranges anywhere from 5x to 45x. You'll notice that on this particular microscope there are only three objectives. If you take this class in college, the microscope will most likely contain a fourth objective which is the oil immersion lens. The oil immersion lens allows for greater magnification by placing a drop of oil on the slide. The drop of oil acts as a third lens. Now that we know what a compound light microscope is, let's look at the different parts of the compound microscope. First is the arm. The arm is used to hold the microscope during transport. The second part is the base. The base is used to support the microscope and is also used to transport the microscope. You will use your one hand on the arm to hold it and one hand under the base to support it while you are moving it from one place to the next. The next piece is the two knobs that you see on the microscope. Depending upon the microscope, it can be either two knobs differently as you see them here, or they can be basically two knobs stacked together, one big one on the bottom and then the smaller one on the top. The course adjustment knob is the bigger of the two. The course adjustment knob is used to focus on the image. It moves the stage up and down um, until the and basically the specimen comes in view. The second knob, the smaller of the knobs, is the fine adjustment knob. The fine adjustment knob is used to sharpen the image of the specimen being viewed. Next is the light source. In today's microscopes, the light source is built directly into the microscope. Um, early microscopes used, use either a candle or a mirror to reflect light into the um, microscope to better view the specimen. In addition to the light source, microscopes also have a diaphragm. But depending upon the model, the diaphragm is either a dial, which is basically rotated and it controls the amount of light that is basically shown through um, the specimen, or it is a lever. By moving the dial or the lever, um, the observer is able to control the amount of light. You will see um, that some specimens are better viewed using very minimal light, whereas other specimens are better viewed using full light. By adjusting the amount of light, the viewer is better able to view the specimen that they are looking at. In addition to the um, light source, the microscope also contains a revolving nose piece. The revolving nose piece holds the different objectives. By rotating the, this piece, the observer is able to change the magnification of the object being viewed. Again, the objectives themselves, all right, on this particular one, you'll see that there are three of them. When you get to college, you will see that they will have most likely a fourth one. Uh, the objective holds another lens, which increases the total magnification uh, for that microscope. The last two pieces are used to hold the microscope slide itself. This black platform stage that you see here is called the stage. It holds the microscope slide being viewed. The metal clips that you see here are used to hold um, the microscope slide to the stage itself. Now that you know what a compound microscope is and the different parts of a compound microscope, let's talk about how you're going to use it in this class. Depending upon the day, you may come in and the microscope's already set up for you and ready to be used. Other times, I may ask you to move them from one spot to another. Remember, in order to move them safely, one hand should be on the arm while the other hand should be underneath supporting it as you move it. Now, let's talk about how you're going to use it, okay? First, there will be a dust cover on top of the microscope. You will need to remove the dust cover. The electrical cord will be wrapped around the two prongs in the back. You will need to unwind it and plug it into um, the power 
power supply. You will notice that there is a power switch either in the front or on the back or on the side that you will need to turn on in order to um, turn the light on. Once you have um, it connected to a power supply, please make sure the microscope is in the following condition before you start to use it. All right, the stage should be in the very bottom position. The low power objective, which you see it is here, needs to be clicked in to position. Then you will place your microscope slide on the stage, and then you will use the coarse adjustment knob, remember that's the larger knob, to focus the image of the specimen. Then you will use the smaller knob, which is the fine adjustment knob, to sharpen the image. If you are going from low power, or also referred to as the scanning power, to medium power, you will simply rotate the revolving nose piece to the next objective, and you will again use the coarse adjustment knob if needed, and then use the fine adjustment knob. Sometimes you only need to use the fine adjustment knob to sharpen the image. If you are going from medium power to a high power, you should never use the course adjustment knob. That is because it can potentially break the slide and damage the lens. Now, when you are given a microscope, please let me know if the microscope is not working or if it appears dirty. If it appears dirty, I will give you a lens um, cleaner to clean the lens. Again, if you have a problem, please let me know so that I can fix it. Also, when you are using the microscope, you will see most likely in the eyepiece, there appears to be a arrow. That arrow is called a pointer. The pointer is used to point out a specific structure on the slide that you were looking at. For example, if I wanted you to see the nucleus of a cell, I would put the tip of the pointer on the nucleus and then ask you to look at the nucleus. You would know that the nucleus is at the tip when you're done with the microscope, please return it to the original condition. Again, the stage should be all the way down at the bottom. The low power objective should be clipped into position. The power cord should be wrapped around the prongs again, and the dust cover should be placed back on top of the microscope. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is total magnification. On your quiz, test, and maybe even on the SOL, you may be asked to calculate total magnification. To calculate that, you take the magnification of the ocular lens. Remember, typically it is 10x, and again, you will find it stamped on uh, the microscope, and you will multiply that by the objective magnification. And again, that will be stamped on to the objective. So we're going to say uh, for this calculation, we're going to use um, low power and we'll say the magnification for a low power is 5x. So in order to calculate total magnification, you are going to multiply the magnification of the ocular lens by the objective lens. All right, so for this particular um, specimen that we will be looking at, the total magnification would be 50x. 10x times 5x equals 50x. What that means is, is that the object that you are viewing in the microscope is 50 times the actual size. It's your turn to calculate total magnification. Pause the video, read the scenario, and calculate the total magnification for both low power, medium power, and high power. Notice at the bottom of the screen I included two images for red blood cells. One is what you would presume to see under medium power and the other one is what you might see under high power. Um, I didn't include one for low power because there uh, isn't really one that's out on the web because really all you're going to see um, if you look at it under low power is what looks to be uh, dots on uh, the microscope slide. So notice the difference as you change um, the magnification from medium power to high power, you can see more detail uh, in the two images. And you'll get to practice using the microscope uh, in a lab that we're going to do in class. Okay, so that concludes basically the compound microscope in a nutshell. I've included a web address, as you see on the slide here, that you can go to and you can practice using a virtual scope. It has a uh, virtual microscope and you will notice that when you get to the virtual microscope it is set up like I explained that sometimes you will see a microscope that has the coarse adjustment and fine adjustment knob basically stacked one on top of each other you will see that set up with the virtual scope so we will be doing a lab uh, using the compound microscope so you'll get um, opportunities to practice it and uh, fine-tune your techniques so be prepared to take a quiz on the compound microscope when you come into class 
Um, you will be given basically a picture of the compound microscope asked to uh, calculate total magnification, and you'll have to identify basically the different parts of the compound microscope that I covered. Thanks. Have a good day.